I think eight to ten minutes is probably good. We have a nice hot bath. It's not weakened because we haven't all used it just yet. And so eight to ten minutes will give you a nice, crisp, black outline. Keep in mind, if you don't want a nice, crisp, bold outline, if you're like doing like a snow scene, like uh, polar bear and snowstorm, and you just want the dark eyes and the mouth and then everything else to be really light, come talk to me because we might only bite it for 30 seconds or we might bite it for two minutes. But for the most part, I think to get the drawing on there, eight to 10 minutes is pretty good. And by the way, if that seems like a long time, if we were using copper and we were using hydrochloric acid, like in the Arts MIA videos, that that bite would be an hour. So a gray would be like uh, 20 minutes or 10 minutes. So our whole bite can be up to 10 minutes. So what do I mean by that? Let's again, pretend this is our cross section of the plate. It's been coated with the ground, we draw through the needle, and we bite it, and depending on how many seconds, or how many minutes we leave it in the acid, it keeps biting down to a certain depth. So this one here might be a full 10 minutes, this one here might be five minutes, and that might be like 30 seconds. And so the shallower the line, the less physical ink it will hold, so the lighter it will appear. And so that's something you might want to think about. Like if leaves, like who's working with leaves? You're working with leaves in the monotype. Like maybe you do this really bold outline for the leaf, but for all the veins inside, maybe you draw it on there, but then we do what's called a stop out. And you actually bite the whole plate first for 30 seconds. You pull the plate out, you let it dry, and then you actually paint in all the veiny leaves because now that seals them. The veins are sealed, they'll stay at 30 seconds. Then you can put your plate back in the bath for now nine minutes and 30 seconds and get the 10 minute bite, right? Because you have to add your minutes up. So here's where it gets a little confusing. Mm. <clears throat> so let's say, uh, let's talk about Aquatint and then I will grab my sketchbook and show you an example of how to maybe plan your image. And then I'm gonna show you how to Aquatint it. So if, do you all agree this is a sh pretty shiny plate? If I carted ink onto here and then I wiped it with a piece of paper, could I get it pretty clean? Yeah? What we want to do is we want to give it this sandy texture. Because if you imagine rubbing ink into a piece of sandpaper, it's going to be very difficult to clean that off perfect. It's going to hold on there quite a bit. So how we do that is either mechanically, like with these types of things, or we do what's called an aquatint. So if we use our, our half plate as an example, we don't, we, we're, I'm going to demonstrate on a clean plate, so we'll, there's not even a design on here yet. But the spray paint that we use is Krylon Gloss Black. So if for some reason you go to the flammable cabinet and there's a blue or a flat black or some other color that might be stashed in there, we need the gloss. Don't ask me why, it's just through trial and error, even all the way back to graduate school, we determined that Krylon Gloss Black is the spray paint to use. There's other things you can use. For instance, in the Arts Mia video, they use powdered rosin, and we could certainly use that too. We have hot plates. <clears throat> powdered rosin is super, super difficult, especially for beginning print makers, because it, it melts very quickly. Mm -hmm. So again, what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna demonstrate this in a moment, but after shaking this up thoroughly, we're gonna use the spray booth over, over there, and we're just gonna mist our plate like, with little teeny speckles. So we're not spray painting, it's gonna basically cover our plate with lots of little teeny tiny droplets of that spray paint. So kind of exaggerating here, but if all these little marks from my Sharpie marker are actually little dots of spray paint or little grains of sand, if you're imagining sandpaper, that resists the acid. So when we mm. put the, the plate in the bath, in between all those droplets, <coughs> will basically bite little tiny negative shapes of those droplets and give a smooth plate a sandy texture and that'll hold ink. And again, depending on how long you leave it in is how dark it'll go. Zero seconds, sealed right away. So it, the acid never touched it, so it's gonna stay white. 30 seconds, one minute, minute 30, two minutes. So the further you leave it in, the deeper it goes. And so you have to think about uh, covering up areas. And so this is where it takes a little bit of planning. So questions so far before I show you how to actually apply the Aquatint and then show you how to put it in the bath? Well, it seems to me you can do the same thing, dry point or etching. So what's the advantage <coughs> of etching over dry point? Does the plate last longer if you're doing a bigger addition? Or? Um, the advantage is, number one, 
Uh, dry point, if here's the cross section of our plate again, whether it's plastic or zinc, when you drag the needle through your plate, it creates not just a cut, but a burr. Because unlike li the linoleum, where you were actually scooping the material out, it's really displacing it. So you have a nice little groove that you could rub ink into, but that, that ink will also then collect behind the burr and create a very beautiful fuzzy line. And so we see that in our examples over here, like here in this, this sea turtle swimming, this line here is kind of fuzzy and bleeding. That's not the ink doing that, that's the, that's the burr. Mm. And so if you didn't want the burr, you could then go back in and scrape it with a scraper and carefully scrape that off. So the advantage to zinc is it's a clean bite. So if you didn't want the burr, even though it's desirable, you would want to etch it. In theory, if we were gonna print big editions, and by big I mean 50 or more, the dry point line will wear down. That burr will get squished. The line itself won't fill in, so the etched line, in theory, is more stable for a bigger addition. And then the only other sort of advantage is two things. One, it's a lot harder, because you actually have to press kind of hard with these needles to scratch, especially in the metal. And so it's easier just to use the, the etching technique as far as elbow grease and calories. But the other advantage is we get continuous tone. So whereas our dry point, we have to crosshatch, or stipple to get tone, we can actually get true grays, like blended on the paper, no half-tone dot or anything. So zinc and etching affords you wider variety of textures. You're a little bit more limited with, with the dry techniques, but just by a little. Okay. okay, so that's a great question. So let's try this. Let's take this over here, and I'm, this has to be shaped.